Damn it. Well, too bad. Anyway, it is what it is. Damn it, I wish I was recording it. It was a good, good, good could have been a good meeting. Okay, so I already talked about this. Genetic factors also play a role in your menopause weight gain. If your parents or relatives carry extra weight around the abdominal area, you're going to do the same. Um, It's not about doing extra sit-ups or extra crunches or squeezing your abs and releasing them, squeezing your abs and releasing them. It's not about that. It's about the food you eat. The number one thing you need to do is eat more protein and watch your sugar intake. But I'm going to go over that. But those are two, two main things. Um, so lack of exercise, unhealthy eating, not enough sleep will all contribute to that 40 plus weight gain. People that don't get enough sleep will snack more and tend to consume more calories because there's more time in the day and they're bored. So we have to really think about, like I always talk about sleep and stress and how you need to really pull that in and rein that in. That's hard for me because I only get four to five hours sleep a night, but I've been trying really hard to take naps every day, even if I'm not tired, to get in that extra hour of sleep every day, because I know it's super important for weight loss. It's super important for your energy level. And now I'm going to be 48 in August. Like I know that that age is right there. That sucks, by the way. Saying that sucks even more. That number sucks. Um, so there's so many reasons why you, it's amazing and so awesome that you're in this program because when you start gaining weight in your abdominal area, which is where you're gonna get it typically with that 40 to 50, it'll cause breathing problems, type two diabetes, which is what happened to my mom and heart disease and cancer. All those factors are risks of being overweight and holding your weight in your abdominal area. If you find that it's really hard for you to lose weight in your abdominal area, you need to stop going to fast food places, cut it out, 100%, done. That should be a done deal. No more fast food. It is preservatives, it is shit, it is not good for you. If you're doing macros and you wanna add it into your program, I'm fine with that. But if you're 40 and over and you're coming to me and telling me you're not losing the weight or it's harder for you to lose the weight or it's all in your gut area, that's when I'm going to say, you know what? Tough love. No more fast food. You're done. Now we really have to tighten the reins because now it's that much harder for you to lose that weight. It's no more. It's, you, now you have to give yourself restrictions. I restrict myself probably out of 95% of stuff because I don't want to backward slope. I don't want to gain the hundred pounds I lost. And I know getting to that age, it would, ha it could happen. And I joke around all the time. If I wasn't in the fitness and nutrition business, I would probably have already downward sloped if I didn't become obsessed with it and make it my life. Cause it's hard. It's not easy. Um, and then it doesn't help that we have, you know, menopause that pulls us back even more. Um, there are ways to uh, fight menopause or whatever, 40 over and 50 over for men. And that is to stay in your calorie deficit. I talk about that all the time. If you are not exercising as much as you say you are, you need to revisit that and think about, you know what? I really need to come clean with Shannon. I'm really not doing this or my schedule changed. And I need to let Shannon know because, you know, I'm at 1800 calories and I should be at 1600. I will let you know, nobody will ever be less than probably 1300 or 1350 calories. Cause that's like fair. Unless you're like four foot 11, you won't be a low calorie like that. That's a low calorie diet and that's not healthy for you. So don't ask me to change that. Um, we talked about this 150 minutes more of vigorous aerobic activity. That is cardio. That is not weightlifting. 
that is biking, not walking, running, jogging, swimming, hiking, vigorous activity. If you're strolling and taking a three mile walk and your heart rate's not going up, that's not what I'm talking about. You need to pick up the pace, get those arms moving. Just like, you know, when I tell power walkers, pump your arms, that's what's gonna get your heart rate up. That's vigorous activity. That's gonna help your weight loss. Taking the dog on a five mile walk is not that, that's not what I'm talking about. That's great, it's functional fitness, it's neat, it's all that great stuff. But, oh, I want to talk about need too. But it's not, I'm just making myself a note, but it's not going to help you with aerobic activity to lose weight. Um, and it's great that you're getting out with your dog. Um, and then strength training, obviously, I've talked about this at least two times a week as you go through your changes, three to four times a week. Pick up that muscle mass, build that muscle mass work your body. Plus, you know, we um, tend to get osteoporosis as we get older. And the more you lift, the more you will combat that. Men and women both get it. Um, we talked about eating less, um, sweet tooth. So a statistic showed that, and it might not be you guys, but that sugars account for over three to 500 calories a day in a normal American's diet. That's crazy. That's why there's so much obesity in America because of all that shit. And the second sentence to this is, going through a fast food drive-in may seem like an easy option, but it's not. It'll make you work twice as hard. And I don't even know if anybody on here went to fast food lately. I'm just using an example. So please don't think I'm attacking anybody. I'm definitely not. Um, sweetened beverages, soft drinks, juices, energy drinks, Red Bulls, all that crap, flavored waters, sweetened coffee and tea all contribute to that abdominal area fat as you're getting older. Um, cookies, pies, cakes, donuts, ice cream, candy. Hopefully you guys are not eating that. If you are and you're accounting for it and you're having a having a time, hard time, difficult time, challenging time, losing weight, especially in the abdominal area, cut it out. Raise your hand if you've been in the program and you've made a lot of sacrifices food-wise to see changes. Raise your hand if you regret it. Stop it. Oh, raise your hand if you regret it. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Wait, raise your hand. Wait, I meant the wrong question. I meant it backwards. Raise your hand if you do not regret the changes. <laughs> Made me think when I saw Lydia's hand go down, I was like, what, you regret it? <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad you guys are not regretting it because in the long run, it's gonna be huge. I know you're not going to want to hear this part, but limiting your alcohol. I have no problem with you guys drinking. I have no problem with you guys putting it down as fats and carbs. But what you put in your drinks makes all the difference. Are you having cranberry juice with your vodka? You know, are you having um, ginger beer with your whatever you drink it with? Like even the light ginger beer things I've been seeing around, like those are not good. Try to stick with something that's straight up. Like I do, um, you know, like the bubblies with Tito's. Um, and watch your intake of it and watch your habits when you drink. Because a lot of times when we drink, we eat and we don't realize we're eating. Um, I'm so disappointed that I did not freaking put the record on. Um, and I probably will never be able to repeat this again. You guys know that, right? Um, but next, next six weeks, I'll talk about it again. I want, well, remind me, we've got to talk about the next challenge too. I didn't do any housekeeping. Um, and then, you know, seeking support, like this group, asking me questions, coming to me all the time, using the groups is super important. Okay, so I'm going to read a couple of things that will help you. And then I'm going to talk about our, our second topic, which is a quick topic, which is I'm also kind of glad that it's recorded because a lot of people have been asking me about that too. Okay, really quick. 
Here are a few tips to help weight loss during menopause or any age for male or female. Eat plenty of protein. Protein helps keep you full and satisfied, increases your metabolic rate, and reduces muscle loss during weight loss. So for those of you that I noticed 40 to 50 grams of protein left on the table every day, stop that. Get it in. Leave the carbs, eat the protein. I want to see it done. Like, if you have to leave something, leave the, the carbs, but you have to try to meet, meet everything. But hypothetically speaking, proteins are super important. Um, so a lot of people don't do this because of their skin, but include dairy, dairy in your diet. Dairy helps you retain muscle and helps with your bone. We all know that. It's calcium. I have dairy in my diet. I am not one of those that I don't have any dairy. I eat all organic. First of all, I don't believe in organic, but that's my own opinion. Second of all, dairy is good for you. And if, but if you don't have it in your diet, think about doing like a calcium supplement, like those little chocolate squares or something. Um, eat foods higher in soluble fiber. We talk about this all the time. Flax seeds, Brussels sprouts, broccoli. They will help increase your insulin sensitivity, reduce your appetite and promote weight loss. Drink green tea. Green tea contains the compounds of caffeine and a whole big long thing, and that helps you burn fat. Now, I'm not telling you if you drink green tea every day, you're going to burn fat. It's just one of those things. That's like if you have a UTI and everybody's like, drink cranberry juice. You would literally need to drink like 50 gallons of cranberry juice for that to make a difference. But it, the effects of it in the long run. Um, practice mindful eating. Don't eat when you're stressed improve your relationship with food, obviously. Um, and the last thing that I wanna say is it's better to focus on your clothing and your health versus the scale. And it says that right at the bottom, highlighted right there. So it's not me that said that, it's textbook. Super important. If you're feeling better, your energy levels are higher, your breathing is better, you're not out of breath walking up and down stairs, you know your health is improving because you changed your health lifestyle. The scale is not the end all of be all. So many people lately at Orange Theory, I just got bubbly all over me. So many people at Orange Theory lately have been like, oh my God, you lost so much weight. Did you lose weight? Did you lose weight? I haven't lost a pound, not a pound but my body fat went down. So I look smaller, but I'm not, I haven't lost any weight. So remember that, like, I don't let myself get caught up in the scale, but you have to weigh in every week to hold yourself accountable. You don't want that to get ahead of you. Let me see if there's anything else I want to say. Um, and then the last thing I want to say about menopause and stuff, and it's really not about the weight loss, it's about the hot flashes because someone said, well, every time I work out, I get a hot flash. Well, hot flashes are not induced by working out, just so you know. You can't induce a hot flash. Hot flashes just come. I've never had one. I don't know what it feels like. I can't tell you any of that, but I've done a lot of research on it because we're going to talk with Dr. at the retreat also. Um, but supposedly acupuncture will help with, the over 40 word, that menopause word, the hot flashes, all of that. So there's, a, I know a great acupuncturist um, up in Palm Beach Gardens, Jupiter area. Um, I use it for my shoulder. I have a torn rotator cuff, but I don't want to have surgery or anything, but she really does help with acupuncture. That helps. Um, so that will help you guys. Um, and yoga helps with that menopause and all that fun stuff. So that's that. Next thing I want to talk about is five ways to stop late night snacking, because that is a huge topic as well. Late night snacking, go to bed early is the number one thing I tell everybody. Nothing good happens after 10 o'clock at night. Why are you up? My mom used to say to me, why do you need a curfew past midnight? Nothing good happens past midnight. She's right. Like what happens past midnight? Nothing. I don't get FOMO anymore from anything, by the way. I've learned to love to be by myself. So I will not, I don't care if I miss out on the biggest party of the century. I have no problem with it. I will be home in my bed, whatever. Um, but I make myself, oh, I missed a message. Hold on. 
holy crap, how do you only sleep one night, a, one hour a night? How do you even function? And do you drive on the road? Because I don't think I want to even be on the road with you. <laughs> one hour a night? Um, that's crazy. Um, oh yeah, so what was I saying? Late night snacking. So the first thing is, I tell everybody, go to bed early. If you're hungry, go to bed. Are you watching TV? Is it that important that you have to stay up? Go to bed. Sleeping is good for you. You won't think about food. You're done for the day. You've already hit your macros. Go to sleep. Um, plan your late night snack ahead of time. So I always have a yasa bar. If I don't have a yasa bar because Mike ate my last one, I literally cry. Like tears. Like I get so emotional about it because that's what I look forward to every single night that I've hid my yasso bars because I've come home and it's, you know, I get done with orange theory and it's nine o'clock at night or I get home from a cycle class or something. And that's all I want. And there's none there. So now I've hid them. And that's something I like to have. There's somebody in the group that has a dove bar, a little dove square every night. It's accounted for, it makes her feel better. She doesn't binge after that. There's no late night eating, but she, it's planned for. Um, make it an experience. So when you um, have that protein shake, don't just chug it, sit down, enjoy it. That's not late night eating. That's like your last meal of the day or the last thing you have for your macros. Um, think about it. What protein flavor do I want tonight? Should I add strawberries to it? Do I have room to add blueberries to it? Make it a nice shake that you're not just chugging. And maybe that'll help stop that after binging because you did more for that last meal. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll save my carbs um, and I'll do a protein powder with my carbs. I mean, my <laughs> protein powder with my oats and I'll make that my dessert. Even though it's a breakfast thing, it's so good. Um, you can add PB squared in it, you know, PB2 in it. Um, avoid associating relaxing with late night snacking. How many of you feel like when it's the end of the night, you want to have a snack to relax? I know Brian and I aren't the only ones. Thank you. Now put your hand down. How many of you associate a glass of wine to wind down? Jen, I know one time you did, right? No, just your shirt always just said it. <laughs> I can't drink wine anymore since COVID. Oh, why you drink it too like, much? It just no, it doesn't taste good anymore. Like since I had COVID, oh, since you had COVID. Like, COVID. Oh, now oh, you that's and, awesome. and it's eight, and I just can't drink it anymore. Oh, good, good. Well, I'll take the wine tank top. Just kidding. I, I kind of miss it though. I, don't don't miss. It. I haven't had wine in three years. I just, just let it go. Don't even think about it because wine is so easy just to chug like a bottle. So I actually let go of it. And I think you're going to really appreciate it after this. Like it's been, a, it'll be a year. You'll appreciate it after you've had your COVID for a year. Um, so instead of going for your snack, when you're relaxing, stretch, do a yoga pose, hold a plank, Maybe um, get your spouse, significant other, child, someone to go for a walk with you. It doesn't have to be a long walk. Um, meditate, pull out your journal. Does anybody have a journal? I do. Am I the only one that has a journal? Oh, good, Lydia has a journal. I see a hand, I just don't see a name. Oh, Diana has a journal. Um, so journals are really important. Like every morning, and I've talked about this in previous challenges, I do my thankfuls every morning. Like, what am I thankful for? It could be, I'm thankful for this highlighter. But I do 10 thankfuls every morning. Sometimes they, you know, they repeat themselves. Sometimes they don't. But I can be like, all right, I'm thankful that I was able to put my slippers on this morning. I'm thankful that I walked down the stairs and I didn't see a cockroach. I don't know. I think of all those things. Like, for no joke, and this stays in this group, we had a rat. And it was the most horrible thing ever. And it, cause they're building like new places, you know, they're everywhere. And every morning I put in my journal, I'm thankful that I walked downstairs and did not see the rat. One morning I did, had a freaking heart attack. 
We do not have the rat anymore, by the way. But um, it was horrible. Anyway, I, so those thankfuls are in my journal. And I write when I'm stressed. Like right now, I'm totally overwhelmed because I have the new challenge starting. We have the retreat coming up. I have all this new merchandise for coming up. And writing in my journal takes away my stress and it takes away my eating. Because when I'm stressed, I want to eat. And when I'm home and the refrigerator is downstairs, all I want to do is, oh, what did I have in the refrigerator? What do I have to eat? What's in the pantry? Oh, I want to eat this. Oh, do I have any macros left? Oh, you know, I'm not going to eat this for dinner because I'm going to eat these because I want them now. And then comes dinner and I'm like, damn it, I wanted that sweet potato. But I don't even remember what I ate instead of the sweet potato unless I looked in my journal. Unless I looked in my log. So start journaling when you're hungry and you'll also know that witching hour. But at late night, if you find yourself hungry, just start writing something down like, I wish I could eat right now, but I can't eat right now because I already ate all my macros and eventually you'll not want to eat. Um, think about the future you. Why are you here? Why are you in the group? Why are you doing this? We talked about that. You know, we have the group, put your why in there, put your promise in there. When you want a late night snack and you're like, screw it, I'm not putting in my log, Shannon won't know. Think about what you're doing to yourself because what you eat behind closed doors shows in public you guys have all seen that poster somewhere it's all i've seen it a hundred million times am i really hungry is this just a habit that i've built up over time i've put in a couple of people's habits stop late night snacking or um no whatever i think it was no carbs after eight o'clock this person wanted um, so, and I can put that in there for you. How am I going to feel eating this when I wake up tomorrow morning, knowing I shouldn't have had this? A lot of you will come to me and repent your sins, but that doesn't always work. Um, and have compassion and give yourself grace. Because if you F up, it happens, move on. All right. I'm going to let you guys go because I am going to get cut off. Um, Oh, she paints her nails to avoid snacking. Love that idea. That's awesome. Keeps your fingers occupied. Great idea. Um, you know, hand massages with lotion, any of those things, keep your hands occupied. Love that idea. That's awesome, Jen. Thank you. All right. I'm going to let you guys go because I'm going to get cut off and I don't want to get cut off. Um, if you have anything you want to add, just message me and I'll post it. I'm going to post some of the things we talked about. I apologize that not everything got recorded, but I did record a good 30 minutes of the meeting. Um, I wanted to mention a couple other things. So I'm gonna post for another quick meeting, not tonight, but just to go over housekeeping stuff because the next chair tribe and all that stuff. So keep it on the lookout. Um, I hope you guys all have a great night. Remember, always be badass. And don't forget we have Friday weigh-in. Bye everyone.